I'm taking off the direct mount fast eddy and I'm swapping it out for the dual track. I got some peep twist I want to fix. I need to retie in the nose button. The soft knots are looking a little rough and I want to inspect my cables. I think they're ready for replacement. I want to show you what that looks like. Come along, full ABT. What separates the black gold sight from others is this little doodad right here. This little driver, this is what allows you to adjust that first axis or the rail so that the sight up and down matches your strings when it's all level and we'll do that in a little bit. Next, these two screws allow you to get extra windage which is why we'll be able to run this through the bridge lock. So you can see the orientation, you can adjust this to be here, there, or there. I'm going to move this as far over this way as possible because prior to this site, when I ran the Fast Eddie XL, I could not move my site any more to the right. Hence, I went back to the direct mount. Now this will give me options. So, all right, that's set it off. You get to decide, do you want to be at the top? Do you want to be at the bottom? This will even give you more real estate if you go to the bottom. I'm gonna start right here at the top and see how that feels. But make sure that that driver's in. Probably just hand tight it because these are going to need to stay once we put a level on there and do the first axis. And then we'll put a ham ski tool on and we'll do the second axis. And then we'll do the plumb bob trick and try to get the third axis fairly close as well. And then we'll go shoot it in. And then we'll go get a sight tape for it. Took the direct mount off. This is your set screw. So I'm going to put this in and just crack it a quarter, a half turn tops. Then you go down to the bottom of the sight and you put the same size Allen. So if I turn this to the left, it's moving that bottom pin closer to the, the top pin. I want these two pins to be as far as apart. So now that the set screw's cracked, I'm gonna turn it to the right, and I'm gonna go until I pretty much take it as low as it'll go, giving myself as much distance between the two pins so that I can cover as much ground as possible. This is very important for me as an elk hunter. So traditionally, I tell most elk hunters to run a three pin slider. That way you have 20, 30, 40 covered. I do like pins in the middle. And so if I'm gonna run the two pin uh, and the triple stack from, from Spot Hog is just too big and bulky, I'm gonna go ahead and set, put the set screw back. And right there, those two pins are as far as apart as possible. It should end up being something like a 20 and then that bottom pin should be like a 35 or 40, giving me some pretty good ground in case an elk moves, and then anything past 40, I will have to slide out for. I always like to set the sight all the way to the top, so it's bottomed out of the top. Some people will forget to do that, and they'll have it right here, and that's just not giving you as much real estate. If you set your sight up like this, you won't be able to have a sight tape as long as possible. So. I'm gonna move this all the way up until it bottoms out. That's where I'm gonna set my 20 is to be right there. And then I'll just move the housing until when I sight it in to get that to be my 20. Then I'll have all this real estate to slide. I should be able to get my bottom pin to be out to 120, hopefully, and we'll find out. Also, be careful on black gold that you don't strip them. Once it's locked into place, I've, I've actually tried to slide this when it's locked and stripped it, and then you're in trouble. So I always kind of keep that fairly loose, but not loose that it makes a sound when you shoot your bow. Bridge lock, I'm gonna run on that dimple right there. Not there, not close. This is what Josh Jones would suggest. Compressing, getting it closer, giving you even more yardage. Uh, if you run it out further like this, you're gonna lose a couple yards. Uh, it's gonna show torque more, but that could be a good thing. Um, I'm gonna go kind of right there, middle of the ground. So we're gonna slide into the bridge lock, crank it down. It fits pretty good. I mean, um, Black Gold did not have these at the beginning of the year. All Black Golds come with this little tape mark. Believe it or not, Tim Connor, you won't get a ticket for taking these off. It's not like mattresses where you're not supposed to remove the tags. You can take this off, and all it's giving you a warning is that. This third axis adjustment is a very teeny tiny 
you're gonna hardly move that. So take your tape off, guys. And speaking of third axis, we'll show you how to adjust that. That's gonna be the knob that you adjust once you crack the set screw that's on the other side you can't see. So we got right here, we'll crack these for the first axis. Second axis will be the bubble. Third axis will be here, and we're on our way. I can move it, that's not good at all. That'll throw off your whole entire world and you'll start shooting low or really high. So move that back down there. We're gonna retie that in. Uh, look at my soft knots, they're completely frayed right here. So we're gonna take those soft knots out. And then lastly, and this is something I'm gonna have to do with Josh Jones, but if you guys can see, this is where my cable is really getting a lot of wear and tear and that's because that's where it runs through the mod. Uh, yeah, there you go. See how dirty and nasty that is? I'm not getting any separation yet, but that's a lot of wear and tear and I haven't changed the cables on this. I just changed the string this year and so I'm gonna have to call up MFJJ and say, yo, start making me some cables for the V3X29. The string is in good shape. Uh, so we have some tinks to do, guys but uh, we want to always keep you informed on our journey. We are going to adjust the first rail first. So string level with the first axis of the site. This is a huge deal when you get into extended ranges. I just say like, it really shows up at like 80 and I don't really like shooting animals at 80, but I like shooting foam at tack, so you wanna have your tack set up doped. First rail adjustment. I don't know a lot of other site manufacturers that kind of have that real specific adjustment without um, some sort of shim system. So what we're gonna do is you have to have a, a hamski tool. We just put this hamski block on there so that it's super flush. And these are level, but this isn't. So I'm going to crack these two screws, one and two, and on the other side here, I'm going to use this little tool, this Allen wrench to move it. And we'll get you a close up of what I'm doing in a second. And I'm just gonna watch my level and I'm gonna turn until it's, that's better. Still a little bubble, right? So we're gonna, I'm just loosening. That's money, dude. So guys, come here and check this out. I'll show you which one that is. This one right here. Left or right, watch the bubble on your ham skew tool and get that first rail doped. That's snug. Now we need to adjust the second axis. And we can do that by looking at our bubble, our bubble, and our bubble. We need to get this bubble to the center. So we're gonna crack this one and crack that one and match them up. Okay, we're cracked. And then you're just gonna manually move this. How's it looking? This bubble. This bubble and this bubble. Ain't nothing in less. Now with these sights, if you want to get a light on with the, the black gold, they make a little adapter that slides over the top. You can loosen and put it on there. So you can't run a light in certain states, but most states you can. And I do a lot of ground blind hunting, so in certain instances for the black gold, the solution is to crack that and slide that in there, we'll do that now. And now you got a light on there. All right, friends, next step on this uh, tinkering process is, you see this hamski rest? I don't know if you can see this. We're gonna fix that. We're gonna push this down, tighten this up. We're also going to do a twist in the string or take, or take a string out to get that peep lined out, retie this in. Uh, soft knots, might have to take this D loop out and redo soft knots, but um, we're just working on our rigs. This is definitely my, my hunting rig, so I want to really have it dialed. I like to go here before I press it. So we need to go this way. So we're gonna come out. sure you're on. Oh, we give it a nice pull. I just go slow. I'm not MFJJ. Now that is a straightened out peep sight. Check that out. What we're going to do is take to knock and you can see I got some serious nasty soft knots that have been abused. 
we gotta take those out. And because I've had this D-loop on for a while, we're gonna go ahead and take this D-loop out as well and tie it in straight to match this peep. And so I guess we're doing D-loop soft knots and then we're gonna tie this nose button in because right now it's you're able to move it. Yeah, I do have a silver Sharpie, Jake. I'm a pro, okay? This is my favorite little buck knife just because it opens up really cool. It's got this little knob right here. So I just keep it in the shop. I'll put a silver Sharpie mark on here. Beeswax helps it get snug. You're just doing basic knots, over unders. How many do you do, Jake? I usually do three or four percent. Yeah. Doesn't take much, but just I'm starting closest to the knock and working my way this way with each knot. And on this last one, I'll do a double. And what I mean by that is we'll just go here. I'll go over one more time. Cut and burn. Rinse and repeat. All right, for the new loop, four and a quarter is usually the distance, and then you want to puff, puff daddy it out. I can tell you right now, if you don't know how to tie a D loop, it'd be a really good idea to practice on a set of strings or something before you head to the field. To get your start, you can fold it in half. You're not going to face this way. Take it through. And do something kind of like this. The key is having this knot facing outside towards you and then the opposite knot on the other end facing the opposite direction. Choke up on it. All right. There's a little groove in these where the nose button slides on and that's where you want to run your constrictor. So your constrictor is going to be you go around once, twice, three times and slide it underneath them all. all right. And then we just want to see if we can move it with our finger. Okay. And then I will add a Sharpie mark here. So I got a dot and a dot before and after in case something bad were happening. Cut and burn. And be careful when you burn around these. You want these, I want these to be sharp and prickly. So let's review. New D loop, new soft knots, tighten the nose button in, half, or, uh, half twist in the string to get the peep twist out before we go shoot this is the old door jam plumb bob trick for third axis to kind of get it close. Okay, so I'm just gonna loosen this guy and push down on the blade. And we're good to go. All right, friends, so the Hamski is on with the vertical axis here. The Hamski bubble matches the sight bubble. That's, they, they need to be on the same page. We've already done the first and second axis. This is your set screw for third axis, so I'm just gonna go ahead and crank this loose. I'll set that here for my friend Jake behind the camera, who's going to adjust this one based on what we're seeing. I like to do this at full draw. Okay, so my vertical line's on there. That's mine. Check it again here in a second. Uh, where's I can tell? I'm bubble right. You need to go to right there. Yep. A lot of tinkering today. Again, this bow needs probably to replace the cables. String was replaced earlier. Pretty easy stuff as far as tools wise. Some of the stuff I do carry on my website just because I feel like you need to be able to tinker with your own equipment. The Hamski Gen 2 is on there. The OMP Bow Vice is on there. 
Uh, Last Chance Press is on there. String Leveling Tool is on there. So check out elkshape.com. We do have some stuff on there for kind of tinkering. But you need to be able to learn how to do some of this stuff in case you're on an extended travel hunt and uh, have a bow repair kit and have some reps at doing some stuff like this. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll go shoot a few arrows. Uh, Watch me, I'm gonna move my whole housing down. So crack your elevation, Alan. And then to the right is up. We wanna go down. I'm gonna move it, keep moving it until I see five. We'll just tighten it up. And slightly to the left. Move it one click to the left. So the left one is just right here. Loosen it. Move it left, one, two, three, four clicks. Little left, but the nice thing is guys, is that um, before that, when I was running the spot hog, I ran out of, my arrows would shoot to the right over here, and I couldn't move my sight to the right anymore. Now I have more than enough room. If anything, I'm kind of left. So I gotta do some windage adjustments. We'll do that later tonight when the wind calms down. We'll shoot this evening, but thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.